Now we can get started on painting these parts. I don't have quite everything de-rusted and ready yet, but I've got enough finished here that we can at least get started. The main body here, I put some masking tape on the bottom there where the trucks will be making contact with the body. I found with the last car that you really want that area masked because otherwise you're going to have to clean it up later if you want the internal light to work. Some parts like these have no good way of being set down while they're drying, so it's best to make hangers out of whatever you can to make sure nothing happens to the parts while they're drying. As for painting area, I'm using the garage again. I have plenty of newspaper tapes down to the floor there, so there's plenty of overspray area. Today is about 69 degrees, 70 percent humidity or so, and very little wind, so it's a perfect day to start with the priming. For the first coat of paint, I'll be using Krylon Now Spray Primer. This is a really fast drying enamel that can be handled in 10 minutes. You can find it at the hardware store for just a couple dollars a can, and it has an excellent finish. Alright, we'll start with the bottom side of the roof here. I'm using the spray can. I hold it about 8 inches or so away. I just go in a motion like that at each angle until the whole area is coated. One of the nice things about this kind of paint here is that you can do the entire thing in one coat. There won't be any paint sagging and the coating will still dry out nice and thin. I think that just about does it for the bottom of the roof. Now to get the top side of the roof done, I've set it down on these three ounce cups so that none of the paint will run off onto the newspaper and make it look bad. The reason I did the bottom side first was so that when I set it down onto these cups, a little bit of the paint might come off with them, so that can be touched up later. And since it's on the bottom, it can't be seen after the car's been assembled. Now that roof is all primed, and it's looking better already. And because this paint dries so quickly, this will actually be ready for the next color in an hour or two. For the passenger car body, I do the same thing with the three ounce cups, stacking it on top of them. And I'll leave it on top of those until the paint is completely dry. For the actual colors, I'll be using collector colors from Hennings Trains. These come unthinned in one pint cans, so they don't need much stirring straight from the can. Just a little bit to make sure it's all mixed up. For thinning this paint, Hennings Trains recommends that you use naphtha. And I like to thin it about one part naphtha for every two parts paint. That seems to get me the best results in my airbrush. For this passenger car, I'll be using number 252 red for the main body and roof, and number 600 cream for the windows and doors. I've seen these passenger cars offered in both the lighter red and a darker one. 252 is the lighter. The darker one is also offered, and I believe it's number 219. This is an A220 airbrush from Testers. It's from their Aztec line of airbrushes. It is one of their absolute cheapest models. I got it at a Walmart 10 years ago for about $20. But despite being so cheap, it has been extremely reliable and it always gives me really good results. For the propellant, I don't do a whole lot of airbrushing so I just use these propellant cans from Badger. I've just airbrushed those two doors. In a few minutes I'll turn them over and do the other side. Paint's easy enough to airbrush on. Just do a couple quick sprays like that. And that's enough coverage for each door. 
I've just finished putting the first coat onto this window frame piece here. There's still some gray showing through, but I'm not going to put on any more paint for now because I found out last time that the paint will sag down if it's coated too heavy. And then it just won't look good if that happens. Painted the other sides of the doors now. And this is all I'll be able to do today on them. Unlike the Krylon paint, these collector colors are very slow drying. And I'll have to wait about four hours before I can even bring these inside. And it'll be at least tomorrow afternoon before I can give them their second coat. I've just finished putting the first coat of red onto the passenger car body and to the roof. This color seems to be extremely bold, so we'll see in about a day or so if this will need a second coat. I've just finished putting the second coat of paint onto the doors and windows, and that's looking a lot better now. I don't see any more gray showing through. So, once that paint is fully dry, which will take, I'm guessing, about two days, I should be able to move on to adding the lettering to the window frames. This has now had about a day for the paint to dry. I've given it and the roof a good look over, and although the coverage is excellent, there are just a couple spots that are a little thin or a little bit rough, so I'll be giving both of these parts a second coat of red. I'm getting ready to put the second coat on now. Today's a little windier than before, so I've got to watch the surroundings a little more to make sure paint doesn't get anywhere I don't want it to. So, just before I start, just do a quick spray to make sure it's coming out of the airbrush real nice. And then, go in a nice sweeping motion like that until it's got full smooth coverage. That side looks good, so I can move on to the rest of it just the same. Okay, those both have a smooth coating all around now. There shouldn't be any more thin spots. And this paint is going to take a couple days to dry before I can really work on this again. So I think this will be all for this step on painting. Next thing I'll move on to is cleaning up the trucks and polishing the metal trim.